Hello, this is Akira Tsukamoto. I am going to talk about TIP, Trusted Execution Environment Provisioning, Implementation on Risk v Keystone, and ARM Trust Zone. I have talked about similar topic at Risk v Global Summit. Today, I'm going to add recent activity of TIP protocol discussion at IETF and the details. This is today's agenda. First, I'm going to start from explaining what is TE and trusted application and how the TE handles on RISC-V CPU. Then I will explain TIP protocol discussion at IETF. IETF is Internet Engineering Task Force, which is a standardizing internet protocol. Next, I am going to talk about how we implement TIP on ARM Cortex-A first, and then how we moved on to RISC-V, and then recent activity on IETF regarding TIP discussion. And at the last, I'm going to show the details of the TIP message. Now I'm starting from introduction of TEE. We are running critical application on any kind of device or any kind of product. And what is critical application here is I'm going to explain details in the later slide. We do not want to run critical application when having a many vulnerabilities. And we do not want to have vulnerabilities on running critical application. The reason behind the, the hardware is getting faster and faster and the software and operating system is having more feature and feature and all both getting complicated. So how are we going to mitigate the current trend of issue? Then TE kicks in. TEE is the way to isolate running critical application from regular OS such as Linux, Windows, Embedded OS. And what is critical application? In this slide, it's mostly it's called trusted application or enclave. The word trusted application mostly seen on ARM related documentation and enclave is mostly used on Intel. Most of the popular CPU architecture starting to provide TE hardware, Intel SGX, AMD SAV, ARM Trust Zone, and also RISC-CoVA has PMP extension. What is requirement of TEE? One is hardware. Hardware must have feature to isolate or partitioning between running regular OS and critical applications. And also there must be API to run critical application with software support. What is critical application, which I have been keep repeating, is an application of a secure sensitive operations or operating on sensitive data. For example, payment. DRM, watching movies, authentication, for example, insurance on the device or surveillance camera. So TE makes it possible to run trusted application inside isolated execution environments. This is enumeration of TEs on RISC-V CPU. First one is Multizone from Hex5, Sanctum by MIT, Timber5 from Grads University of Technology, MI6 from MIT, it's a different group from MIT, and Keystone from UC Berkeley. We chose Keystone as a base to implement our TIP. The reason is it's open source project and also it's actively developed. Not all the open source projects are active, so it's important choosing an active project. And our use case, we need Linux, something which it requires MMU on the CPU, and also the design was modular design, easy to add our tip on top of Keystone. This is how Keystone works inside RISC-V. It's led by UC Berkeley. The link is on the left below. They are doing a great job. Please see the detail at the link. So on the left side, it's showing how the Keystone boots trusted application called Enclave here on RISC-V. So first, when the CPU powers on, executes binary inside the boot ROM called ZSPL here, and then reads FSPL from the flash, which contains secure monitor, and then change the privilege mode from the highest machine mode to the lower privilege mode, and go to the bootloader and boot Linux. On the Linux, there will be client application called trusted app one and trusted app two 
going to be executed. These client app for the enclave or called trusted application, whatever you call it. So when the trusted app one is executed, then Keystone hands over through the Linux device driver and go through the secure monitor and start executing trusted app one, which is enclave or trusted application inside the TEE. It's same for the trusted app two. When the trusted app two starts, goes through Linux device driver, go to the secure monitor, and then trusted app two is going to be executed on the TE side. On the right side, it's how the hardware supporting the TEE. So risk five has PMP. There's a PMP entry from eight to 16 on risk five. And what PMP does is every single entry is able to separate physical memory address and limit access to specified region. So on the example here, trusted app one in the pink color is only able to read physical memory address inside trusted app one region. Cannot read Linux region, cannot read the secure monitor region, cannot read trusted app two region. And trusted app two only could read inside their own physical memory address. Cannot read Linux partition, cannot read trusted app one region, cannot read secure monitor region. PMP have many features. It's not this simple, but if I really simplify the explanation, this is how it is. Now I would like to explain how the trusted application used and why we need it. For the beginning, the target devices are smartphone, IoT, or edge devices. For example, network attached storage, NAS, edge router, Wi-Fi router, automotive infotainment unit, which is in the dashboard, set-top box from cable company, or Chromecast or Apple TV is one of the set-top box from internet set-top box, and surveillance camera, multifunction printer, which it's combination with scanning feature, copying feature, and printer. Another target device is data center, which is running many guest OS. Most of the use case of the trusted applications related to payment, DRM, authentication. For example, credit card app, PayPal, Netflix, cable TV set-top box, mobile phone from mo operator, automotive feature authentication. For example, paying extra, you will get quick charge, insurance terminal, and others. And another very frequent use case is secure firmware update. None of the device want to be compromised from the vendor or service provider. So trusted application uses as a firmware update from the server. And here that slide is TAM server. It's going to be explained in the later slides. And another thing is data center, cloud computing. Many customer of the data center who is hosting their web server or their service on the data center as a guest OS, they started to asking the data center vendor having a feature that technically it's impossible for the data center vendor is not able to read inside the guest OS. This kind of requirement is getting popular, but I am going to focus on edge devices in this presentation. Well, why we would need TIP standard way of managing TA from the first place? The devices which has trusted application installed at the assembly line entirely use the device until the device is no longer required or until the service is discontinued and reaches end of the life. This kind of device already existed from the past. However, if you see all the use cases in the previous slide, all the devices and the server is connected to internet right now. All the features, all the critical operation is done talking device and the server through the internet. And this kind of use cases, we need T because the new use cases are updating the trusted application for the security update or adding the new feature on the application, supporting new media, new camera device, 
or service vendor would like to install their own application to the new device. To achieve this, it requires device side and server side to cooperate each other on a uniform way between many device vendor, many trusted application vendor, many service vendor. So this is the reason TIP is discussed at the IETF. These are three paragraphs extracted from TIP draft at IETF explaining the objective of the TIP. The first sentence, managing life cycle of the trusted application, what managing means, install, execute, and delete. And the second paragraph is, enforce the trusted application and isolated TEE and cannot be tampered. And detect when the device or trusted application is tampered. And the third paragraph is, what trusted application does, application components performing security sensitive operations or operating on sensitive data, as I explained in the previous slide. What would be good to have T? For example, there are, the device vendor could be all different company, or there could be different vendors, and the TA developer or service vendor could all different companies, organizations, and individually de developing many devices and individually developing many different TAs. For example, devices in the home, surveillance camera or smart lock, or devices in automotive. Many different TA developer could add new codec, new feature, security update, or adding new authentication with new insurance system, or feature upgrade of the device itself and to ensure all devices and all trusted application developed by different organization different company individually to achieve secure way to install and delete and manage them this is the benefit of the team i will explain how the each component in interact each other with simplified tip diagram there's a server and a device. Server is called TAM, Trusted Application Management Server. In the device, there are untrusted area and the trusted area. Trusted area is TEE. Trusted area will have a TEEP agent, which handles TAs. In untrusted area, normally it's running Linux or operating system and has a TEEP broker. And client app here in this example, client app one and client app two. These TA client app will be installed from Apple Store or manufacturer of the device at the assembly line or service vendor bring with the USB device store the app one to the device or, for example, car dealer who is authorized to manage the device will install the app. And App 1 and App 2 is uh, developed by different company. And they're going to communicate with TAM server through TIP broker. In today's explanation, I'm going to talk as if TAM is initiating the procedure. However, in TIP, all the triggers happen from the device. So on this, it's the device sends the first packet to the server. But today's explanation, I'm going to talk as the server is initiating the event to simplify the explanation. So first, how it does is app one in the device will require your own TA in trusted area. So app one will contact with the TIP broker and then TIP broker will talk to the TAM server and then TAM server will provide the binary of the TA one through TIP broker and through the hardware and going TA going to the TIP agent and then TA will be installed to the trusted area. For the and updating is the same procedure. When the device will not require to have the TA installed, then for example, user have finished subscribing the service or the device vendor will like to terminate the feature in the device or TAM server have finished their service on particular device or would like to update the TA, then it will 
notify the server from app one talking to tip broker to the TAM for the deletion. To grasp entire discussion at the IETF among tip, it's spread many working group and many draft. And somebody inside the IETF internally participating the discussion required to explain the entire picture. I will start from the right side of the slide. There's many working group. And there's three working group related to TIP. TIP working group, and suit working group, and rats working group. So pink portion is suit working group. Suit working group is defining manifest of the trusted application. Trusted application is a binary, whether it's application from the tier vendor or data or personal information from the service vendor. TA must be trusted or verified by the TA developer or service vendor. So that's the pink portion, what Suit Working Group is discussing and defining and engineering. And the blue portion is RATS Working Group. Device vendor will not like hardware being tampered. So hardware vendor will like to attestate hardware is not tampered and also TE side is not tampered. And that is how to conduct the authenticity of the TE and device is discussed in RATS group. Next is TIP working group. TIP working group has three drafts right now. And the left side, yellow one is TIP architecture draft, blue one is TIP protocol draft, and green one is TIP over HTTP draft. So what each does is yellow portion defines each component in the server and the device, the role and what they do and requirements. So the TAM server is a yellow and inside the device, untrusted area has a TIP broker and app one, TA client, and the T side, TIP agent and TA1. So requirements of all these yellow components is defined in the TIP architecture draft. And the blue draft, TIP protocol draft, only defining the message format between the TIP broker and TAM server. So that's only it does. And, and another thing is TIP message is encapsulated on the HTTP packet on top of TCP. So that's defined in the green draft, TIP over HTTP draft. So when starting reading the each draft, it's almost impossible to understand entire picture. So this slide, this page is very important to understand entire scope and discussion inside the IETF. Finally, I'm going to talk about initial prototyping of TIP on ARM Cortex-A. And this prototype implementation was done in old TIP architecture draft. So some of the word is different, but I'm going to explain the differences in, the, in this slide and next slide. TIP basically use asymmetric cryptographic algorithm. So TA developer in this slide, it's called a service provider. The service provider is the old word for the TA developer. And TA developer is already, the name is changed in recent draft, but I'm going to just stick on as a TA developer. We'll create public key and private key, and also have a UUID to identify the TA. In this slide, it's called SPA public key, and UUID is handover to the TAM server. And the device inside the TE world it has a SPI private key. And also who manage the TAM server will generate a private key and public key pair. And then TAM server itself has a private key. And the device inside the TE side will have TAM root certificate. Now I'm going to explain how the device work. The device on the Linux side, TA client has a UUID which TA he needs. So conduct his uh, application. So. TA client will hand over the UID to OTRP broker. OTRP broker is the TIP broker now. And the difference between TIP and OTRP is going to be explained in a different slide. And OTRP broker will talk with the TAM server. And then TAM server will hand over the TA binary. And the TA binary is prepared by encrypting TA by SPI public key. Normally, the binary 
is encrypted by private key, but in this draft, it was using public key. So the binary is uh, encrypted by SDA public key, and then it was signed by TA TAM private key. So it has a TAM signature. So this binary will be handed over to OTRP broker, and OTRP broker will hand over the binary through the Opti implementation of the SMC and go to the other side of the TEE and OTRP TA will receive the TA binary. OTRP TA in recent draft it will be TIP agent. So TIP agent OTRP TA will check the signature with the TAM root CA and if its verification is success and then decrypt the binary with SPA private. So it will assure the binary is from genuine service provider and it was communicating with correct TAM server. Then the TA will be stored in secure storage. Once its TA is installed, it, when the TA client is executed, device user or running automatically in the device will execute the TA inside the TEE. For example, handling payment or decoding video. That's how the entire scope runs in our initial prototyping. Finally, 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 this is ongoing our current tip implementation on RISC-V. It took a very long time to get to this slide. The slide itself looks similar to the previous page. However, some of the words is adopted to recent ITF draft. And another point I'm going to talk here in this slide is how we adopt our implementation on other CPU, for example, on ARM. And honestly, in this slide, it says GP API, but I'm going to explain what is GP API later. First, we implemented the GP API on Intel ARM RISC-V. So we could have uniform implementation on all three different kinds of CPU. The Green portion is under development by AIST and Tragio. And the uh, orange portion is developed by SECOM. Isobe-san is also attending IETF and TAM is open sourced by SECOM on the GitHub. The name is called TAM Proto. And green portion is not open source yet. We would like to, but not yet. Moving to the details of the green components on the Untrusted side, which is running Linux, is Tape Broker and Hello App. And the TE side, it's provided by Keystone Project, is running Tape Agent and Hello TA. Hello TA is a sample TA, just printing out Hello TA. That's all it does in prototyping. Before I go to the further explanation, left side explains the changes in the draft from last year to this year. Initially, all the message format between the TIP broker app and the TAM server was JSON. JSON is widely used on many internet, web server, web browser, and, and supported by many library. However, the TIP draft have moved to using only Seaboard message. The reason behind is Seaboard could make the message size much smaller compared to JSON. JSON is text-based message it's easy to understand, especially at the hackathon, bringing your own device and other people bringing the TAM server. And if it's, if you talk to each other and something doesn't go well, then it's easy to debug it because it's text format with the ether real. It's not ether real now. It's a Wireshark. There's four important message. One is query request, query response, install to it and delete to it. And later, the draft also installed TA and delete TA is changed, but um, I'm just going to explain what it is right now. Query request and query response, some of the JSON packet was after encryption and after signature, it was sometimes it's more larger than 1.5K MTU size. So packet might be separated to two packets. However, Seaboard, it's a equivalent message. It's only about something similar to 30 bytes or 40 bytes. And what is a Seaboard? Seaboard is similar to ASN1 binary text converting format. It's much newly designed binary and text format definition. Another benefit of a Seaboard is 
implementing Seaboard parser and, and decoder is more lightweight from the implementer perspective. Explaining Seaboard is not this simple, but I'm going to end it here. In a nutshell, Seaboard is designed to, to adopt on edge devices, which the resources of the device and the internet is constrained. I'm going to move on the implementation inside the device. In the device, Tip Broker app and Tip Agent is playing a big role. And however, underneath the Tip Broker app and Tip Agent TA is all different for Intel, ARM, and RISC V. In IETF, when designing and discussing and engineering and writing draft to standardizing specification, if it's only going to usable on only particular CPU, then the draft and the specification and all the discussion and effort is not going to be used in the world. All the effort is not going to be rewarded. So designing all the specification to be able to run on all different kind of a CPU architecture is very important. In our design, we already had the implementation of TProco app and Tip Agent on ARM, which was running on Opti, and which Opti was providing Global Platform API. Global Platform API is widely used on smartphone right now. Initially, it was implemented for the set-top box, but it's widely used for many trusted applications is running on Global Platform API or Global Platform API-like interface. So completely having a different kind of API again for the every different CPU is not optimal for any kind of R&D activity or business or service division. So when we started this project, we first selected about 30 subset of the global platform API and ported it on Intel, ARM, and RISC-V. And then we put TIP, HNTA, and Hello TA on top of it. This is the reason on the green box, it has a GP API box underneath both of them. If you look at the specification of the global platform API, there's about more than 200 APIs more specifically Global Platform Internal API documentation. And we do not really need all the 200 API if we're going to use it for the new CPU architecture or on new TIP protocol and on TIP usage. The reason of having 200 is keep historical backward compatibility. So Global Platform API could not delete old API and the new APIs was keep added. So that, that's the reason it became over 200. What we really need is opening TA, running TA, closing TA, something like handling TA, random function, hash function, and also symmetric crypto API and asymmetric crypto functions, API for read, write, save for the TA personal data. So that's about it. And about 30 API extracted and ported Tip agent TA perfectly fine on top of Risk V Keystone. Now I'm going to dive a little more further. On the bottom it says Risk V RV64 GC, and honestly, it's SV39 is hidden. And what RV64 means? It's Risk V, which has a 64-bit instruction set, and SV39 means it has an MMU on it. So this implement this is running on 64-bit Risk V with MMU on it. Above, it's written SM Keystone. It's a secure monitor which is customized with the Keystone project. Secure monitor itself on for the RISC-V has open source as a reference implementation. Keystone project customized the reference implementation so Linux side is able to hand over a secure way with using PMP with the TIP agent TA and Hello TA separately. That's why it's not just a regular reference implementation of the secure monitor. And above that, on the right side, it has a Keystone runtime. This is what Keystone project make it easier for us. Keystone runtime is replaceable. So in our implementation, we use GPAPI wrapper and implement the TIP on top of it. But 
you could just replace this layer and run well-known secure OS cell 4 on Keystone. Another important aspect here is component design. Deep Agent TA and Hello TA has a dot vertical line because it's separate with the PMP. That means if you're using property license software, if you have a GPL license software, it does not affect each other between the PMP, which has a context switching through SM. This is very important because most of the business usage, for example, payment application, video decoding application, likely to have closed source application. I will explain how the discussion is happening at IETF. My understanding is historically, IETF had about three meetings in a year and also have a mailing list. Those places are the main discussion places. When you want to talk face to face, talk at IETF meeting and everything else is going to be discussed at the mailing list. Mailing is a public mailing list. And recently, ITF meetings started to have a hackathon at the same time. For example, in an RTIP working group, we brought TIP device, R implementation of TIP device, and Dave Data from Microsoft, Hannes from ARM, Isobe-san from Secom is bringing their time server, and conducting, talking device and time server each other, and uh, finding the issues or improvement item and reflect to the discussion and reflect to the draft. And recently we have a very convenient to GitHub, all the draft of the team to move to GitHub and using as a communication tools. I would like to show the communication in the mailing list. In this slide, the bottom portion is the discussion at the mailing list. In the center is my email posting CTDL format of the TIP message proposing will this be okay for the draft. Discussion at the mailing is purely technical. The culture of the mailing is in open source is pretty similar. Bringing my experience of the open source mailing list culture to the IETF mailing list worked pretty well for me. These are examples on the GitHub. For the TIP working group, all three drafts have moved to GitHub in this year. It's becoming similar to open source project. When you have a question or discussion, file as an issue and iterate the discussion until get to the conclusion and make a pull request to revise the draft. And if it's okay, it's going to be applied. This is how the draft is updated right now. On the left side of the slide is my pull request fixing the hexadecimal representation of the Seaboard message. I was converting text message to hexadecimal by hand assembling and made a little bit of mistake revising many format in recent activity. My experience long time ago, hand assembling and disassembling paying off right now. On the right side is a pull request adding Seaboard a message examples. In TIP protocol, originally TIP message had six message. Query request, query response, install, delete, success, error. And this was the pull request to add exact Seaboard text format and binary format in the draft. And that's something I am going to talk in the next slide. This is my fun part. This is exact Seaboard expression in the binary and text. On the bottom right side is the hexadecimal representation. Hexadecimal is started from OX8, then it's RA. If it's OX8, it's a map. If the number is smaller than OX17, then it's an integer. If you're repeating hand assembling and uh, disassembling, started to memorize the contents by reading the hexadecimal. I don't know if it's a good thing or not, but um, yeah. And the left side, Seaboard Diagnostic Notation. It's, it's meant to make it similar to JSON in human readable format. The left side is perfectly in text format. However, you may notice by reading that the left side of the text format itself is not that easy to 
understand meaning of the number, um, how to construct the Seaboard message. So on the top is concise data definition language, CDDL. And this is the format mostly used on the IDF draft. It's easier to implement the tip message on Seaboard. This is my procedure. Reading CDDL, writing an imagination in my brain of the Seaboard diagnostic notation, and then hand assemble hexadecimal on the paper. Try the implementation. After converting to hexadecimal, you might find improvement in the draft. Something is missing, something is not easy to understand, some entry is not used. And then you're going to the mailing list or GitHub, suggest the improvement and making the tip draft better. This is how improving the tip draft. All right, this is the last slide. So this is the summary of the recent update around IDF 109 in November. We had a hackathon and we changed a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six is six summary I picked up. So the first one is adding a CBO representation and binary example in the draft. When implementing the device in the time server and the communication does not work as expected, it's really difficult to debug with only text expression in the draft. Having a binary is very crucial to nail down mismatch and improve the compatibility. Second one is yes. Entirely, entirely today's all the talk I have explaining that critical application, the name is trust application, trusted application, suddenly changed the trusted components. The reason behind is any binary we see from the time server to the device does not always contain application only. Sensitive data only is perfectly fine. To make more intuitive to have the only data message itself, the name have changed trusted component. So TA is going to become TC from on. Well, it's technically reasonable. Having a ID for the TA, uh, I know that TA became the TC in the tip draft, but I'm, I'm going to talk as a TA in this presentation. TA needs the ID so the device side and time server side could distinguish which TA binary is required in the device. We had many discussion as a temporary solution. I was using UUID and our implementation to distinguish the TA. However, now we officially came to the conclusion that we're going to use a suit component identifier from the suit manifest. Inside the suit manifest, we're going to using suit digest as a suit component identifier. And here it's component ID, which was TA ID. And the initial design of the tip message was when HAM server send the message and reply come from the device, distinguishing the which message came from which device will use token. That was the basic design. However, one of the message in the tip message query request likely to be the same for the all devices which TAM is interested to handle. Then the token in the response message is useless because only makes sense if the sending message is different for each device. So it's valid suggestion. It was a suggestion from Isobe-san from SECOM. It's not only not necessary, if the person who is just reading the tip message draft and was not participating in the discussion at IETF or reading other draft, may you misuse the token for the other purpose. For example, using a token for the TA ID, which is a bad practice for the security reason. We decided to change the token as an option entry instead of a mandatory entry. And next is, there are situations the TA is not needed, TC is not required in the device anymore. Server service might end it, user of the device decided to stop using the feature, or the TA is outdated. When device notifying the TAM server which TA 
or TC going to be deleted, there was an entry to notifying to the server. We wasn't clear how to notify the TA to delete in the device to notify to the TAM server. So now we have the conclusion we're going to use unneeded TC list to delete the TA TC. And the last is suit manifest is embedded inside the TIP message. However, initial draft was having a separate binary entry for the each manifest entry. This is the suggestion from the Lepitam working with us for the implementing the TIP device. And Combining all the suit manifest in one binary string, B string, in the C board format is much reasonable and much easier. We decided to use B string C board for the SIP manifest list. This is the summary. I introduced basic TE concept and importance of TE for critical applications and operation of sensitive data. Modern CPU architecture supports TE. And how TE on RISC-V with Keystone works? ITF is designing and standardizing TIP for a unified way of controlling TA on different devices and servers. Relationship of three TIP draft and three different working groups. Status of current development of TIP on RISC-V and Having GP API made porting TIP from ARM to RISC-V easy for us. In the way of ITIF discussion style, CBOR representations and binaries in recent changes. The whoever would like to deep dive, please click the link. I really appreciate any kind of feedback on TIP draft or TIP related working group from the today's presentation. Thank you.